my name is Felipe and today we will be looking at Sonic Couture's newest instrument, Threnody. Today will be a workflow video oriented towards composers, the actual usage of the instrument. If you are more interested in a technical rundown on how the instrument works, be sure to check out James's video which will be linked in the description below. But for today, we will be basically making a short track with several instances of Threnody. It will be free form, so we will provide a timing index on several topics in the description below if you feel like jumping around or if you feel like watching the entire duration of the video, you can feel free to do so as well. Grab a brew and let's get down to it. Okay, let's get the lay of the land first. I have here several loaded instances of Threnody. Um, I have them in Vienna Ensemble Pro and my DAW of choice today is Digital Performer. My MIDI channels are already set up to control uh, the several instances of Threnody, so let's just look at how they work. So one of the first things that you should see as you load up the instrument is this quadrant with the articulations that you can load into it. So the power, or at least what I think is one of the like powerful features of Threnody is this XY grid. Um, you basically are able to load different articulations into it uh, and enable and disable them. Um, you have your list of possibilities here and you enable and disable by clicking on this little square. Also, uh, if you go to the cog window, you will see that you have the choice of CCs to control your XY grid. So for me, I have two ways of controlling that. I can use my CC faders, which uh, in this case, it's uh, just a nano control. Um, you can see that as I move around, the grid moves around with it. Or I could also use, um, hold on, let me just fetch this, my other screen. Um, I have the Magic Trackpad by Apple here and a software called Audio Swift, which turns this uh, Magic Trackpad into an XY controller. You can also turn it into several other things, but I'm using it as an XY controller. So if I just start moving around, you can see that my grid also moves, which is great. Other things to consider with regards to setup is in uh, this kind of, I guess these bars represent levels. Um, you can enable and disable what microphone setup you like. I currently have set up the mains. I have disabled the spots and the ambiences. I'll get to why I've done that uh, in a second. And I have al niente enabled. Al niente basically means to nothing, such that when you are doing, um, when you're writing the dynamics and you go all the way down to zero, they actually mute out. If you don't, have this enabled, then you can hear that there's a little something there, right? Even though my dynamics are zero. So I like to have this enabled. Uh, I also have my expression uh, CC11 map there. <coughs> I also have a low pass filter enabled. I really like low pass filtering because it, uh, it just enables you to shave away harmonic content from the top end. Uh, and you can have high voices, something like this. But by filtering, you are basically shaving off that, that high end to get out of the way of dialogue. Now, let me just check something uh, really quickly here. Yeah, so if you don't already know this trick, basically I was playing and showing you stuff, but I wasn't recording. There is an option in most uh, DAWs today called Retrospective Media Record, which will basically listen to what you're doing in the background. Let's say I'm noodling and I find something that I think just works fantastically and I completely forgot it but I, and I didn't hit record, I can just go to retrospective media record and have that save the day. Let's actually see that. There it is. Uh, it's basically recorded uh, the movements that I made as I was talking. Not particularly interesting but it's, an, it's, an, it's just a life-saving tool sometimes. Uh, so, you know, it's worth, worth of mention. Right, so let's go back into the articulations that we have. Oh, actually, 
Let's go into the articulations and the cluster. So cluster mode we'll look at in a bit. So I have simple sustain, tremolandi, harmonic glissandi, and molto sul ponticello loaded up. Uh, and I can move freely between them. Let's open this up. So it's nice to kind of fade in between the, the different articulations that you have available to you. Now, looking at the cluster mode, um, the cluster mode, uh, first you have to go to the tuning uh, fork little symbol, and there you're able to turn it on or off. Uh, among other things, you also have micro tuning available to you. If micro tonality is something that is to your fancy, you can explore that if you like. Uh, I'm not gonna touch that for today. So cluster, um, you basically have a set amount of voices, up to 12. Uh, I'm just going to stay around, let's say five or six, let's say six. And you can randomize the values at which those voices are. So you're basically like doing a dice toss uh, for a particular cluster of microtones, or you can set that like uh, in a bespoke manner. You can basically set your own um, cluster. Uh, depending on what you feel is right. And again, you can always right click on a knob and do the MIDI learn thing. I have my cluster already uh, learned to a particular knob such that when I play, You'll notice how useful the low pass filtering is. I'm basi I basically use it like a dynamics uh, controller, except that as I go down, my dynamics and my kind of harmonic high end content will also diminish with it, almost like a low pass gate. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna just get my cluster down. I'm gonna leave my low pass open. Uh, my dynamics are set up here. My expression is set up here. So what other things should I touch on? I should mention again that uh, the XY, I am controlling it with either my nano control uh, with two faders uh, that are set here in the little cog icon. Uh, they're set to CC six and eight in my case. And I can control them like this, or I can use the Apple Magic trackpad or any compatible sort of um, XY controller. I'm running a software called AudioSwift which reads my movements on the magic trackpad and turns them into an XY grid. So let's just see that for a second. So a note on the uh, harmonic glissandi. Harmonic glissandi are only technically possible acoustically uh, on open strings, right? But because this is a contact instrument, it's sampled chromatically. Now, uh, the keys have been labeled in different colors if they are open strings on a particular string instrument, which means that they are acoustically possible on those pitches. Uh, it's a bit of a guide for the composer if what they are recording they intend or rather, what they are composing with Threnody, they are intending to, comp to record live. This is a guide that will basically tell them whether it's possible or not, if you're not super familiar with the open strings of the string family. So, very neat. It's a nice little helper tool there. So, 
let's just try to build something. I'm going to start off with the harmonic glissandi just because I really, I'm, I really like them. And I'm going to move around. I'll set up like some sort of harmonic bed and move around and just start adding stuff with different Threnody uh, instances. So let's just see how we go. Okay, that's set up there. Mm, 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 mm. And let's go over here. And I'm going to record with no click. I'm just going to keep this very loose. Okay, I like that. Let me just finesse and check that my uh, CC movements have been recorded properly. You know, sometimes um, DAW gets confused when it sees a CC go down all the way to zero. Like in this case, see like my, my filter, I started touching my filter up, and, up until only here. Uh, so there is no information recorded here, which means that it's going to get confused because uh, it, it will see that the last value is here. And if you play it from here, then it'll jump to this value and it'll just sound just really bad. So it's always go back to, uh, it's always nice to go back and check that your CCs are doing what you intended them to do, especially when it's a complex sort of array of movements as is in this particular case. Like this, for example, there should be a little bit of just something. Right, that's okay. Right, right. And I can always touch my modulation. Let's just actually look at that. Because my, my control, my sustain pedal is set up so that it's holding this all the way over here to the end, but my modulation doesn't really go down. I'm controlling the, the dynamics with the low pass filter, but we still need to aid in this diminuendo with the modulation. Uh, CC. So let's just do that. There we go. Let's just audition this really quickly. And you know what? Our, we could creep in a little more, um, just more discreetly. So So what I basically did was just create a little curve with the expression so that we're creeping in a little bit more naturally. There we go. Sounds nice. Again, I had a little bit of a jump there. Yeah, I think it was just the velocities. The velocities were a little bit funky and there was like a, like a, a little bit of a jump that we didn't want there. So let's actually command S, always save your work. Um, and let's look at this other channel that I've dubbed Ligatiesque. Because I have loaded in the micropolyphony articulations, we recorded these trying to emulate uh, Ligeti's uh, approach to composition in several of his works where this micropolyphonic technique for composition was used. Uh, I think we captured uh, the essence of it. Um, 
So let's actually just audition that for a moment. Um, do I have, yeah, it's, it's set up. All right, so let's see here. I've also enabled the cluster mode here, so I am able to like further control this dense sound and add even more density to it. So let's add to what we've composed with this particular instance of Threnody. that worked nicely. Let's keep going. What else do I have here to show off? Um, right, so I really like these. They're, they kind of sound like spiders. So we have a cluster cloud of spiccato, a cluster cloud of coleño, which basically is hitting the string with the wood of the bow, and several variations on that. So I'm just going to not talk and jump right into it. that does it. Let's keep going. I really enjoy this one, the unstable pitch one. Um, it basically does what it says on paper. Oh, actually, wait, I need to explain this a little bit further. Uh, the unstable pitch patch is basically a very wobbly, um, like a very wide vibrato uh, on, the, on the note that you're playing. Uh, and the Molto Sul Ponticello we've talked about, Chaos Tremolo is just like Tremolandi without regard to tempo uh, and just like very noisy and dirty. Uh, and Tremolo Sul Pont, Tremolo Sul Pont, uh, you are tremoloing as close to the bridge as possible. But additionally, I've set up the XY to move by itself so I don't need to use the XY controller. I can go to create a circle, uh, give it an amplitude and a length in terms of bars and the starting element. And then I, I've set the speed to 0.5 so that it goes slower. I've set it to play upon hitting a note and it will free run and go forward, right? There are different modes, but this is how I've set mine up such that when I start playing, it just starts going around and around in circles. We have some voice stealing happening here. Uh, I probably need to disable something. Yeah, I have 12 voices of Threnody, of, uh, of cluster happening here, so I'm just going to take some away. And I'm going to take the ambient microphone as well so that we don't have as much polyphony happening. Maybe that will help. Yep. Right, no more talking. Let's record that.
got a little bit dense there. Maybe I should increase my buffer size. Running the screen capture and these instances of, uh, of contact is a bit hard on the CPU, but hey, we'll get through it. Uh, so other thing we have happening here is the, we have more spiders, I guess. Yeah, this is a slightly different variation of what we just heard. And this thing that's labeled Weaver is in fact a glissandi that was mislabeled. There we go. Because I want to end on a glissandi, uh, like a, a glissandi downwards. Because you can creep into it and then creep out of it. I think that's nice. Let's actually just start right smack in the middle of the track. Right? We can finesse that uh, CC at the end because uh, the, the cutoff is a little bit like eh, a little bit sudden. But don't worry, we'll finesse that. Let's add in a little bit more spiders at the end. Yeah, so the problem is I'm not, I, I didn't enable Alguente. There we go, fixes the problem. Now let's command save or command S, sorry. And let's just listen to this and see what's up. Right, so now in Pro Tools, I've imported the different tracks of Threnody that we were working with. I've placed them on my timeline. There's actually another uh, old experiment that I, ha that I had run in Threnody. We can listen to it in a bit. Um, basically, the only difference here is that I've lowered the volume a little bit using clip gain uh, just to do a little bit of uh, gain management as a whole. And all my strings are currently being... Um, sent via the other aux bus into an altiverb reverb or several other reverbs. I, I have my FX auxes already loaded up in, um, in a little folder from a previous template. And uh, yeah, so let's just have a look here. I can actually maybe just finesse that ending a little bit more by doing a little crossfade, uh, sorry, a, a little fade out and finesse this fade in just a teensy bit <clears throat> with a fade in and let's just have a listen Pretty gnarly, and I love how you can fade and kind of just morph into these uh, different um, harmonic universes with the X Y control. Let's uh, just for 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 funsies. Let's listen to this other experiment that I that I had performed on Threnody. I actually 
uh, opened up using the, um, the Sonic Couture Hammersmith. Uh, it's a free piano. It's really nice. I ran it through uh, Valhalla Shimmer Reverb to get these kind of uh, just lush octave uh, reverby sounds. Uh, let's just have a listen. So that's Threnody in a nutshell. I'm sure that if you spend more time with it than I just did in this kind of run and gun approach, you can make it sound even better. Uh, it's, it's just opened up extended techniques in a performable and very personal way, which is so important in any sort of composition scenario to just be able to be yourself and not rely on pre-recorded phrasing or any sort of, of just pre-records. This is just, you get to perform it. So I'm, I'm just very excited about the product. I'm so happy to have been a part of it. And we really look forward to seeing what everybody makes with it. So let us know what you think in the comments and uh, we'll see you in the next one.